Hey, how's it going? This is Tim, Shark Lassie Bros, Porsche Pros out here in the garage. Got the 924S here, and this is the one with the martini theme. Kind of take a look. I went ahead and put these uh, stripes on the front. Got a nice badge going on here, and on the inside, got the extra bolster sports seats and a Momo wheel on it. So this car's uh, pretty well set up ready to go there's um this is a, a good runner i've been i've drive this i teach college i drive it back and forth to college classes and it is no problem however <clears throat> where i'm at right now it's very hot so um air conditioning necessity not really something you always get on a, a 924 944 however um i've been working on it i actually had uh and i have a 944 sitting outside and it's in really good shape. It did not have air conditioning working. I went through the whole system and I fixed it. So after that, I felt confident that I could go ahead and get in on this one and try to do the same thing. So anyway, I'll tell you what I'm running into in case you ever run into the same thing. These are the compressors here. These are a couple of the hoses that I just pulled off, okay? And I'll tell you a little bit about that in just a minute. This is actually a compressor from the 944. I went ahead and I bought new compressor which uh, someone told me if it's over 10 years old you might as well replace it anyway um, <clears throat> so I have an extra one here I also bought what you see right here which is the uh, condenser and you see two different lines coming in here top one brings it in from the compressed uh, air Freon and then it comes out into this one and then it will eventually go through the system I can show you what happens after that all right so it comes through the uh, the wheel well down here into this hose. So I've got this hose out, and I'll tell you why. This is the hose that connects to the condenser, and this is the hose at the top. It's got a, a little, um, I think this is a relief sensor that has two wires going into it, and then this is your high pressure here, and then this particular uh, thing fits in uh, right there where you've got, let me get the light shining a little better where you've got the um, opening. So if I could have this, just a little bit of light here. What normally happens is this hose will be sitting on one side, that hose is on the other, and in between is something that looks just like this. Okay, now I got this from um, a guy over at a, um, a Porsche specialist uh, air conditioning, which I'm, I'm not remembering his name right now, I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, anyway, I don't even think it's actually a Porsche uh, dryer. The dryer unit is one thing that you can actually sort of um, use from other ones, um, but you have to get the right one for whatever system you have. But what I'm trying to tell you is that it doesn't, you know, like an alternator has to be pretty much Porsche specific. All this stuff has to be Porsche specific, but a dryer, in other words, this whole air conditioning system is a uh, Nippendenzo. It's, an, it's a Japanese system. And this compressor, if we go to the back here, if you notice right there, that is definitely not Bosch or any German sounding name. Why? Because it's made in Japan. And this is original equipment. And this system is just put onto a Porsche. In other words, they just do their Porsche thing, but they farm out the air conditioning system so you end up with Japanese stuff. And so it's pretty much kind of a generic system, but still means you have to get everything just right and if you're new to this, like I was, it's a lot of uh, learning. So the O-rings right here, and then you have some sort of a, a bevel. Um, there's a word for it. I don't have all these terms in my head because I tend to do a lot of other things. But anyway, this is another hose as well. So this hose comes out of the, uh, the compressor right here, and it fits in there. I believe this one, I could check it, but you're gonna need, if you don't already have it, this one's a 22. Okay, and then I think uh, one of the other ones is a 27. Now these I didn't have in my tool set. A lot of people don't have so much. I mean, you buy a basic set of wrenches, you're not gonna get those. So if you're gonna do some work on Porsche work, you know, this one here is a 27. So you'll need a 27 for the big wrench. And that's pretty much one of the things that I've learned in the process of working on the air conditioning is that all this other stuff on the engine you guys probably have uh, wrenches tools um, screwdrivers and a can of WD-40 and you're pretty much ready to go air conditioning is much much different and I'll tell you why 
Um, if you look up here, these are the gauges. Everybody knows about those when you're first starting out. There's usually a, a blue, red, and then this is your supply for multiple different things. A um, couple different things. Your vac pump, and then I actually have a um, some sort of a blower. Now, I bought one of these sort of handy dandy, all in one, charge it up, and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna buy this 30 bucks and I'll be up and running. No, it's more like, you know, 3,000, no. It's expensive, so you know these are. Now you buy them four or five hundred dollars. You buy a condenser, three hundred dollars. You buy these lines, you know one of these lines from Porsche is one hundred and ninety-five dollars. Um, you can have these made, so that's what I'm kind of coming to the conclusion. Now, when you when you check out your system, you're going to want to make sure that it's sealed. That's uh, what you do when you vac down. Now I had to go through a whole process, and I'm not really. There's plenty of videos talking about how to vac down. Essentially, you want to put this on uh, the vacuum here, vac down for about 15 minutes, and then watch this gauge. What normally happens is it will vac down to about negative 30 and then stay. Now, if you have a leak, it goes back. So, guess what's been happening to me? I vac down, and I sit here, and I watch this gauge going back, and it's like, that's a sign that you have a major leak that has to be fixed, okay? So, I am working on that. Now, one other tool that I have found to be a kind of a handy tool in this whole process is this. If you have leaks, you can sort of pinpoint them with one of these jobbers, which is just a beeping thing. And if you have uh, just a spritz, like a ch -ch -ch, and fill up a little bit of your Freon, if anything's leaking out and you run it around your system or hoses, it is pretty accurate at finding those little spots. However, I found them all over the place. And I think once it leaks out, that stuff gets in the air and it's everywhere. So, I called up a couple different places, checked around, and read online, found out. What can happen is you can actually take, I think, these off. This is a rubber hose, and have it replaced with another hose. So, I haven't got to that point yet, but I'm sharing you with my uh, experience right now. If you have a system that's 30 years old, and in, you know, Florida or anywhere that's hot, dry, hot, dry, hot, dry, your hoses are going to be shot. Um, good luck getting your system. I would almost, I mean, let's hope that you can get this car, you know, air conditioning system with just one or two parts, but guess what? If one's bad, they're probably all bad. So what I've been finding on this one is I found a couple little home remedies that people had done, and I've done some myself trying to make it better, but I found out in the end it's not worth it. You got to get new hoses on here, okay? So I did have the dryer there. If you look down here, you kind of a mess going on. Right down here is a, uh, there's a bolt on the end of it that goes into your um, compressor, and then I've got a splice here because somebody cut uh, something out. I'm not actually sure why they bothered to do that because they didn't put new hose on, but there was a splice there. In other words, there's a piece in the middle, one on one side, one on the other. So I took this silicone tape, wrapped it up real good, and then I put clamps on both sides, and then I spur uh, put a little bit of... Uh, Freon just to test it and guess what the beeper went off and it's leaking in that area still so I'm like okay that's a problem and I've got to get it fixed however when I checked these hoses I also had the beeper going off and I think I had even on this hose here which is going back uh, circling around the system uh, the uh, beeper went off on uh, one little part here but after I wrapped this I mean I used this uh, it's a silicone tape and you might find that too if you, you know if you can patch it with that well great but I'm kind of coming to the conclusion I've got to take these to the shop so I called one here uh, it's nearby and they said $45 a hose and bring it in we'll go ahead and get it fixed now I don't have it fixed yet people talk and we'll see what actually happens and you know you say the word portion it becomes twice as much so we'll see how that goes I will go ahead and uh, do it a little diagram of how this works now Porsche puts together uh, this sort of a, a system. What I can tell you about this so far is that you have the condenser. Yeah. You have basically two lines. One, it goes back to the um, compressor, and the compressor is sitting right here. And notice that there's two uh, parts right here. Now, the other thing about the compressor is like any compressor, like this compressor here, for example, or that little air vac compressor you gotta put oil in it so these things need oil okay how much look it up figure it out and then put it in but these things have to have oil they burn up okay um so 
you basically have this item right here, which is a condenser. And you have a line going here, and you have a line coming back. It goes up to, this is your dryer. Okay, and there is on my 924S, which you may not have on yours, I've actually got an R134 connector. I've converted it myself, and you can actually connect your um, hoses there. Okay, now there is a little sight valve there if you haven't seen this kind of thing before. And then from the other side here, I've got a bolt going back and a hose. And all this goes back, if you look right here, uh, these are both the same things. Um, you actually have sort of a circulatory system. So this one comes back here, this one goes through here, and then at the top here, you would have some sort of a, a fan which blows the air into you know, your cockpit and you're back here and the nice cool air comes out and keeps this thing a nice 73 degrees or whatever, okay? So there's a little box in your dashboard and it has a little system here of coils and somewhere or another the air blows through cold and then comes into, you know, hair conditioning has been around since the late 1800s. It was actually Carrier who invented it for houses here, but they did have a system in the Paris, at the Paris Opera House. They experimented with ice in the basement and blowing air through it. So it's the same system. This is your little ice box here. Blow the air through, comes out cool. But how do you get this cool? You have to compress the Freon, which really isn't Freon, but it's an R134, okay? So it looks like this, or it looks a bit like this. This is another um, part of it right here. So this is 134A. And that's essentially the system right there. This runs off of the drive shaft of the car, so you gotta have that running. There's actually an alternator here. It will take this, which comes back low, and then put it into a compressor. This air, by the way, if you've ever done any scuba diving, it's kind of like a scuba tank where it, it has lots of air in a small place because it's compressed in there, and then you can use it for powering tools and things like that. Same thing here. This is your, did I say condenser? It's a compressor. Okay, so the air comes in, compresses it into this. There's pistons that go up and down to push it into this tube. And then that comes in to the condenser, runs back through the dryer, and then goes back into the system. That's essentially it. Now there will be a little tap in here. This is the, called the low pressure. And this one's the high. Okay, so for a Porsche 944, 924, you're going to end up with a system that's something similar to that. Now I have a 1987 and 924S. Well, my 944 is pretty close to the similar, but the, um, the high is actually on the fender and the lows underneath below. Okay, so if you see something a little bit different, then, you know, that's how it is. But that's the way the system works. It's a circulatory system. It comes around here, goes into a dryer to get the... The moisture and anything else out runs here high pressure cold into there it will lose some of the heat as it blows through and it comes back into this system pumps it in again and then it runs through here changes it from a, a, a gas to a liquid and then in here and goes back and that's how the system works so the key is keeping this and i believe this one's usually around 30 something 35 37 36 depends where you're at and then this one runs up a little higher I think I was shooting for around 250 to 270. So when you start seeing pressures like that, I mean, this is bicycle tire, car tire stuff, but when you see this, it's even above what your fuel pressure or anything like that is, okay? So that's basics of the Porsche. Um, the key on this is get new parts. I think I'm gonna have to take these to a shop. Now, I wasn't sure how to do this. I haven't actually done it yet. I was tempted to go out and buy my own um, little crimper you know these are crimpers are now affordable but I just don't like the idea of it and I'd rather have a shop do it and see how bad they can screw it up rather than me but if they can do it that'd be great and I think it's the best way to go and these parts aren't necessarily available I was thinking you know um, the line right there that you find online for a 944 because this one has a different hookup 
is $195. So anyone who ever says this is the poor man's Porsche probably never owned one because you know this little item right here is now four or $500 just to replace that. And everything on this car is super expensive. I don't care what anybody says, this is not a poor man's Porsche. You want a poor man's car, buy a new Toyota and you'll probably be a lot better off because you won't have to buy parts all the time, okay? So that's it for now. This is Tim Shrakahasi Bros. Porsche Pros, and that's what I've gone over lately on the uh, air conditioning system. I thought I'd share it with you. Sorry it's not well put together, but I try to get the information out there and hopes that it helps someone out. All right, thanks for watching. Signing off.